Hello interwebs and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your all-around host and security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting September 21st, 2015. Let's jump right in by sharing last week's daily security bites. Today's story is Xcode Ghost. You might have heard of Xcode. This is the uh, Apple OS X and iOS developer toolkit kit uh, to create applications for iOS and OS X. If you're a developer, you've probably downloaded this from Apple. In any case, Palo Alto Research found a malicious version of Xcode circulating on Chinese forums that they're calling Xcode Ghost. Long story short, if you compile any iOS app with Xcode Ghost, your application will be backdoored with a piece of malware. This piece of malware is capable of learning all your device information and sending it in a command and control channel and then allowing the attacker to use the framework to do things like find out your iCloud password, steal passwords from other applications, access your clipboard, and all kinds of very dangerous things. In fact, Apple, Palo Alto, and other researchers have found 39 to 300 malicious applications on the official Apple Store. Applications like WeChat, which is a very, very popular chat client in the Asia-Pacific region. Now, the good news at least for folks in the Americas, is most of these malicious applications seem to be popular Chinese and Asian applications. But if you're a developer that downloaded this unofficial version of Xcode, anything you built with it may be infected, and it's a pretty big deal. It's also quite surprising to see Apple's official App Store, which has a significant vetting process, actually being infected with these malicious applications. Now, the good news is Apple and researchers seem to have identified and blocked these applications. The folks that make them have recompiled safe versions of them. So hopefully if you're an Apple user, you really shouldn't have to do anything other than make sure to update your applications. In any case, it's a very interesting attack vector that I think will grow. For bad guys to actually infect development frameworks or tool sets or SDKs, this way everything compiled with that tool set will be infected. The takeaway here for developers is only to download these toolkits from their official sources and use checksums like SHA-1 or SHA-2 checksums to validate that what you've downloaded is very authentic. Today's story is a critical out-of-cycle Adobe Flash update. Now, Adobe usually shares Microsoft Patch Tuesday. This means they tend to release updates on the second Tuesday of each month. But for whatever reason, yesterday they released an out-of-cycle update for Adobe Flash. You've probably heard of Flash. It's a very popular multimedia browser plugin that many people on the internet have on their computer in addition to Internet Explorer or Chrome or whatever. In any case, yesterday's update fixes 23 critical vulnerabilities in Adobe Flash. Now these vulnerabilities differ technically. They're uh, memory corruption vulnerabilities like buffer overflows and use after free vulnerabilities and many other. But many, many of the vulnerabilities will allow a remote attacker to take complete control of your computer. So basically if the attacker can get one of your users to visit a website that has some sort of injected malicious code, the vulnerability can silently use this flash flaw to download and install code on their computer. So you definitely need to patch this if you use flash in your network. In fact, Adobe gives it a priority one rating for all Windows devices. That means they want you to patch in 72 hours. Now there's nothing in this particular advisory that says attackers are exploiting this flaw in the wild. Nonetheless, these sort of flash flaws are very uh, popular to attackers. So again, if you use Adobe Flash, we highly recommend you update as soon as possible. Today's story is a iOS 9 lock screen bypass vulnerability. Boy, it sure has been a bad security week for Apple. First, the Xcode ghost vulnerability that allowed thousands of malicious applications on their official app store. And now a random Spanish speaking YouTuber has found a new way to partially bypass iOS 9's lock screen. Here's how it works. Basically, if you lock your phone, the attacker can actually enter a false password four times. Now, after the fifth missed password, your phone usually will be locked for a minute. But for the fifth attempt, he actually enters all of the numbers except for the last one. While he's entering the last number, he holds down the home button, which of course launches Siri. 
Now, when Siri launches, your phone should still be locked. However, if the attacker asks what time it is, he can get into the clock app. And by searching for a country and then double clicking on that random text, he can actually share it with the messenger app. And this is where the vulnerability happens. The Messenger app should not open because you are in a locked state. However, it does. And this, of course, gives the attacker the entire access to your entire contact list. Simply by searching for all the letters, he can see and access all your contacts. On top of that, he can add a new contact. And when he does, it gives him the opportunity to add a photo to that contact. And when he adds the photo, he then gets access to your photo library, whether it's the ones on your phone or your iCloud photo library, if you're connected online as well. So long story short, your phone should still be locked in this state even though it's giving some access to Siri, but it actually gives the attacker access to all your contacts and all your photos. Now in the scope of things, this isn't the biggest vulnerability in the world. It does require the attacker physically access your phone, and it's only a partial lock screen bypass. You can see your contacts and photos, but it can't actually open your phone and access any of the apps. Now there is a quick fix for this. If you go into your settings, specifically the Touch ID and Passcode settings, you can disable Siri at the lock screen. Of course, that will also disable Siri until you unlock your phone. I do suspect Apple will fix this in the latest iOS update as well. Today's story is Green Dispenser, which is a new piece of ATM malware. Proofpoint released a blog post yesterday talking about Green Dispenser, which is a piece of malware infecting ATMs primarily in South America and India. Now, if this malware has infected the ATM machine, the ATM machine will display a temporarily out-of-service message. However, behind the scenes, the malware is using something called Extensions for Financial Services, or XFS, to control the ATM machine. Now, if the criminal comes up to the ATM machine and enters the hard-coded passcode, he'll gain some access into the machine. Now, these attackers seem more security savvy than the average criminal. Once you enter the hard-coded PIN, you'll get a QR code that's specific to this particular instance of the malware. And we presume that the attackers then use that QR code to enter a second token of authentication. In any case, once the attacker has authenticated to the ATM machine, he can do a number of things, including empty its cache fault, or he can actually delete and remove the green dispenser malware. One interesting point of note is the deletion isn't just a normal deletion, it's a full secure wipe, so that the malware really is gone from the system and much harder for forensic examiners to notice. In any case, this is a pretty interesting and concerning trend. Over the past few months, we've seen a number of security researchers and vendors finding different types of ATM malware. So it seems like ATM malware is really growing and may be an attack vector of the future. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, please join us at blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com where you can find the blog post associated with this video. Besides posting a number of security stories, we also have a reference section in the video blog post that contains links to many security stories I didn't cover each week. I highly recommend you check it out. You can also follow us on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Finally, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want the videos as soon as we post them. Anyways, thank you for watching, and as always, here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.